Hey. Here we go. Here we go, Here we baby. Go, Cam. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, little children, dogs and cats. What you're about to witness is something that yeah. you probably ain't never heard, seen, or witnessed before. To my short left, it's a young fellow, black greatness, by the name of Mr. Gilly, the kid. To my far left hey. is a representative by the name of Mr. Wallow. These men aren't just regular men. They come to you with so much prestige, so much wisdom and wit. Get it low. Please respect the hustle. Please respect the grind. I'm your pusher. And at the same time, understand that the pleasure is mine. Hey, watch out, man. Stop playing with me, man. And that's what Tay yeah, Track, by the yeah. way. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, we coming in right. Listen, man. Listen, you know. Listen, listen. You know we had to come in right, man. We down here. Listen, man. We down here with Cam, man. Fellowship, man. We fellowshipping. Uh -huh. You know. So you know what's great. You know what's ready to go on, man. Mm -hmm. You know what's going down, man. Yes, what they sir. tuned into? Uh, listen, they tuned into me, 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 million dollars worth of game. Now, you know we got a legend right here. Y'all see what's uh -huh. going on. Vicious, I'm talking about a I'm vicious legend. Bug in the building. Yeah, I mean, you got Bug all up in the building. He got Bug in the hey, building. Hey, hey, Bug, listen, they don't know businessman Bug. Businessman Bug. Businessman Bug out here getting that money, yes, sir. making it happen. Yeah, absolutely. To, you know, you know, transition. You know, you know, all lanes, taking care of all lanes out here doing some big boy shit, man. This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by none New other. Amsterdam Vodka. New Amsterdam Vodka. Now, uh, life ain't going your way. Shot of New Amsterdam vodka. You caught your woman cheating today. Shot of New Amsterdam vodka. They told you your check was in the mail and that bitch didn't come your way. Shot of New Amsterdam vodka. It's distilled five times, filtered three times. If you speak Spanish, that's uno, dos, tres. For a clean, crisp finish. You know, so you could drink it with anything straight up on the rocks. Make the classic New Amsterdam mule. Juice, soda, whatever your choice is. So when you're out and about at your local liquor store, you know what to do. Get you some New Amsterdam vodka. The official vodka of bar sloop sports and million dollars worth of game. And shout out to the New Amsterdam queen. You know, she she don't like she she hate when I miss her shout out. Shout out to the New yeah. Amsterdam queen. Be at the crib cocktailing it up with yes. the New Amsterdam. Yes. Get you some. Right, right. I just want to commend you, man. We at your we at your restaurant. This shit. Is, this shit cold. This shit a cold. This a cold motherfucker, man. Did you personally design this joint? I did everything, top to bottom. Oh man, the, the couches whole, today. The whole aesthetic. The whole aesthetic. I think it wasn't nothing like this created in Atlanta, so I created it. And anybody, I mean, y'all know y'all had stints in Atlanta where, yeah. when you like twenty years old, there's a there's a lane for you. You go out, you go to the clubs, and then when you get to a a older age, it's nowhere for you to go outside of like dinner. Mm -hmm. You know, we always see those cats. It's like, bro, damn, bro, ain't you like 40, 50? What you doing in the club? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I created an establishment, Fellowship, and it's in uh, Atlanta where you can socialize, you can business network, you can network, um, and it's like-minded people. You know, you, you, you want to feel it. You want to go to a place where you can socialize, you know, with guys night out, girls night out. Um, with the capacity, we hit, we are a fine dining establishment with the perk to smoke. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to smoke, but uh, all in all, man, it was just something that I was trying to cater to the the, the grown and sexy. And when this place comes alive, man, it's it's black excellence. Uh, it 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 embodies all walks of life: white, black, green, blue. Um, it all. 
So Absolutely. That's what it's about, man. And, it, and aesthetics is very important to you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Let's get to it, man. Let's rock and roll. Why, why is that? Why mean? is they so important, aesthetics? Because I think you have, you have one time to prove to a person, you know, that, well, what's the cliche? What, what, what the, uh, um, I'm drawing a blank here, but, you know, when a person. First time to make a first impression? First time to make a first impression. And one when a person time. walks in here, I want them to, to forget that they in Atlanta. You know, okay. this, ain't, this, ain't, this ain't like, and no disrespect for the people up north, this ain't like no boogie down Bronx. This ain't nothing like rowdy like that. This this the Harlem Renaissance. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, where people, you got to put it on to come in here. Mm -hmm. You, know, you got to look the part. And I think the way you look is the way you are, you know, kind of uh, introduced or how people kind of take you serious. Mm -hmm. This is not an establishment where you can come in with shorts, not to say we're against people wearing shorts, sneakers, or things It's not like in that. this establishment. It's not here. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think once you do that, once you set the parameters and, and, and the infrastructure of what your clientele needs to be or want to be, then everything else falls in line. That's what it's about. Absolutely, man. Definitely what it's about. Now, you know, a lot of people, they know, they know one Cam. They don't know Cam. The upbringing, um, you growing up, what was that like? Mm. How was that? So I'm not one of these dudes to be like, bro, I'm gutter, I'm this, I'm that. Man, I had a, a perfect, a perfect example of what a man was in my life by my father. Mm -hmm. My parents have been together for 36, 37 years now, and it's, and it's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up in a three-parent household, my mom, my father, and my grandmother. And uh, I knew what a woman was, not a bad bitch. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's the difference? A woman. Okay. A bad bitch is a person who's just, you know, girl, I'm a bad bitch. You know, I'm doing yeah. this. I'm doing that. I, 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 I looked apart, but I don't act apart. Okay. You know, and it's a lot of women who are bad bitches. And I say bitches in, in, in a way not to degrade a woman, but just to, to, to go off the aesthetic of what they deem is a boss chick. Mm -hmm. Now, a woman for me is handling your own, but knowing how to cater to a man's needs, mm -hmm. right? And I think a lot of times when you get that aesthetic of like, I'm a boss bitch, like I'm a this, I'm a dad, no baby, like, but you can't cook. Okay. You, right. don't, know, you don't know when to be quiet. You mm -hmm. don't know how to allow a man to lead. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of women, now the kickback of that is be quiet. I'm going to be quiet for the man and handle his business. You know, that's what they say. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh I'm going to be vulnerable. I'm going to be submissive to a man and handle his business. Mm -hmm. That's what they're going to say. So what, what is your? But it's ways to do it. And I'm not just about to sit up there and beat up my, my, my queen. No, I ain't saying like that. Yet. But I'm also going to also tell the men to start being men, bro. Absolutely. Like, that that sucker shit should not be rewarded. And what sucker shit? So, you know when 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 a person when a person carries himself social media wise, and it's a fraud in real life. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know it's more to every person that got money, every person who's rich, isn't a real one. Okay. You know what I'm saying right. And I think that gets kind of misconstrued in this society now because a lot of people have money but they're not genuine people, you know? Right. And I pride myself, everybody who knows me knows, like, bro, Cam's a solid dude. He keeps his circle extremely small. I'm not afraid to be by myself. Uh, quick example, uh, I had two of my oldest children uh, birthday last week, and I'm in the mall by myself. I found solitude in being by myself. Yeah. And a young man approached me and was like, hey, bro, I know your cousin. And I'm like, okay, what's that? Like, who? You know, he, he spoke his name. And, uh, you know, I proceeded to keep walking, getting my children their birthday gifts. Then, you know, he, the same dude kind of followed me into the, to the store and was like, hey, bro, he said X, Y, Z, da, 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 da. I said, man, you know, I ain't got time. It's my daughter's birthday today or whatever. So as he left, you know, my cousin then hit me back. And when I say cousin, first cousin, my, my dad's sister's son, 
Um, he then hit back and said, bro, you got to stop being by yourself. And I simply text back, no weapon formed. Dot, 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 dot. Yeah, he get the rest. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You, yes. you know what it is. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think a lot of dudes, they, they walk around in the army, and it, it, it is true, you know, there's strength in numbers, but at the same time, there's also dysfunction in numbers too. Absolutely. Okay. So, so with me, it's like I really want to hold myself to a standard that when you meet me, like, damn, like, what the – this dude here, his energy, his aura is just something about him. And I've always prided myself with that as a teammate, as a businessman, as a son, as a brother, as a peer, as a friend, as a father. You know, I, I just carry myself in a different way that it's, it's, it can get overlooked because playing my sport, which is a mass sport, you don't often have times to articulate the real you. You know what I'm saying? And I mm-hmm. think my foundation growing up made me the person who I am today. Like, I, I had a perfect example of what that is. I grew up in a church, and my father was that person for me. Mm-hmm. So to be able to discern people's true intentions is a skill set that I have and the whole, you know, dear to my heart that is like, bro, no, he flawed. I ain't. I don't need that person around me. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I don't need no yes man. Every person around me is capable of telling me, Cam, bro, you tripping. Yeah. Cam, bro, you wrong, bro. No, nah, right. we ain't doing that. No, nah, uh-uh. This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by Game Time. One thing about Game Time, you ever dreamed about being courtside? You ever dreamed about being behind the plate? Last minute tickets, you just out of nowhere, lowest prices? Game Time. Listen, it's created by fans for fans. What better way to get it? What you need to do right now is download the Game Time app. You download the app right now, create a login. Once you download the app and redeem code dollars, you redeem the coldest dollars, D O L L A Z, for $20 off your first purchase. I'm talking about this term applies. You know what I mean? But you know, you know how they go last minute tickets, lowest prices. What is we talking about? Game Time is Game Time. Just imagine you being on the floor. Right there. The players right there. You're right there on the floor. You're right behind the plate. I'm talking about the great, I'm talking about them tickets. You've been wanting the great concert tickets. Last minute, lowest prices. What do we talk about right now? Download the Game Time app. You're going to get $20 off your first purchase. What is we waiting for? Game Time. It's Game Time. Let's get ready to go to the game. Let's go. And I want to elaborate on something he said. Nobody's too big for the checking. Yep. And and checking is just a form of correcting. Mm. That's it. Yo, bro, we don't do that. No, no, Lokes. No, I mean, we ain't going to no. do that. We ain't going to. No, Cam. No, dog, you little drunk right now. Get your ass yeah. in the truck, man. Yeah. You tripping right now, man. Fuck what they talk about. We, no, they, you, get your ass in. Nobody is too big for a check Right. And it don't have nothing to do with status. It don't have mm-hmm. nothing to do with money. Mm-hmm. It don't have nothing to do with who's more successful. It got to do with I surround myself with people that I know that generally care about me and right. fuck with me. So if I'm out of line at any time, they can check me. And I'm good with that. And I want to elaborate on something else he said. These niggas out here got to stop it with the goofy shit. You got to stop it with the goofy shit. And every girl that's beautiful with a fat ass and a nice body is not a bad bitch. It's no, 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 no. It's not a woman. Uh, uh, uh. But I'm just saying, to me, right. to me, a bad bitch ain't going to never tell you she's a bad bitch because what's known ain't got to be ain't explained. Ain't got to be mm-hmm. said. What's known ain't got to be explained. Right. You never hear the truly bad, beautiful women who really doing shit and really got shit going on say, I'm a bad bitch. That's a fact. You only hear the ones that is hoping they get to that level to really be a bad bitch and they just going with the exterior. What's on the, what's on the, what's on the outside. But bitch, you're really a motherfucking... 2021 bins with cloth seats. The mm-hmm. insides is fucked up. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I'm, you know, I got to keep it 100 all the time. Not you, the cloth. Yeah, with cloth. the cloth. With, you know what I mean? It's a fucked oh. up, that's a fucked up bins with some cloth seats. In. Yeah, no love that shit. Cloth. Motherfucking tape deck. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, even, even then, man, I, you know, we can stay on this topic. I think too many times in, let's just say, social media, right? Mm hmm. People give the wrong people the platform to, to, to say what they're doing is okay. Stop giving these people the likes. Stop giving these people the time. Stop infiltrating your energy with mm-hmm. fuck shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 
like I and, and and you know to keep it nameless, like people that you guys look up to, that I look up to. I think the thing about when I came into stardom, coming out of high, uh, high school and then in college and then going into the NFL, I had like my 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 peer group changed, mm-hmm. and obviously seeing the likings of yourselves the guys I listen to music wise and I'm actually meeting them. And then the, the thing that, that, that crushed me the most was like, when you actually go into the studios, go backstage, go to the clubs with these people and you start seeing the real them. They never who you thought they was. Oh, you'd be like this, man. this nigga's corny. Oh man. <laughs> Oh, man. So, yeah, it's like... So you was let down a lot. A yes. lot, bro. You basing it off the music and off of somebody... Oh, man, he, oh, he might be a, he a hell of an athlete or he a hell of an actor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And but he's not a hell of an individual. Right, he's just bro. a good fucking rapper. Right. That's it. Right. He's just a good right. actor. And to that, to that, that's his profession. Right. And that's that's the, that's the in essence, clown face that you got to put on and right. be like, oh, bro, he talking about killing. He talking about drug dealing. He talking about doing this, that, and the third, but he ain't really about that because sooner or later, somebody that, your, your car going to get pulled. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Your car going to get pulled. And too many <coughs> times, too many times in my lifetime, the people who proclaim to be this or proclaim to be that, and when the rubber meets the road, when you have a situation that is deemed for you to now prove it, you it's can't not prove proven. it. <laughs> you can't prove it. It's giving synthetic. You know what I'm saying? It's, <laughs> it's giving falsified identifications. Yeah. Right. And I'm the type of person that's like, man, I like the way certain people move. Mm-hmm. I like the way certain people, you know, act. And I can admire from afar and then implement that into the way I move. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not too good to say like when I when I when we when I initially reached out to you guys, man, I told Walla, I was like, man, Walla, man, I DM'd you, man, a couple years back, bro, you a busy dude. I never looked at it like disrespectful. Right. Okay. You know, I never looked at it like you was disrespecting me. I just, I looked at it like, bro, your content that you was putting out was so venomous and so relatable because cats has to know that, bro, you talking this thug shit. That shit don't mean nothing, it bro. It don't mean that nothing. shit don't mean it's that, gonna that, get you it, it ten years listen, in the can. It ain't gonna. It ain't, listen, you gonna you gonna miss the upbringing of your daughter, your son. Mm. You, it don't pay no tuition. You know what I mean? It don't do shit. It don't do nothing. It don't bring no value. It don't pay no grocery bills when huh. you're in the penitentiary. Mm-hmm. And it could get you kissed on the back by some by some big nigga named Stormy. All that know? type of shit. <laughs> tell him. <laughs> what do you mean tell him? That ain't <laughs> happened to me, nigga. Real you shit. talk about throwing that shit on me. <laughs> but no, it's, 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 you ain't peep that shit. He try to slide some dumb shit in <laughs> he on do. me. Listen, he do. So, 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 that, so it comes to the point, though, right, where, where is though, what we did is we took ownership and possession and use it as a flag of dumb shit. Right. As black people. Mm-hmm. Oh, dumb shit belong to us. I'm a real nigga. <laughs> right. No, you're not. You're a dumb nigga. <laughs> right. You just told on yourself on Instagram, you just gave the district attorney evidence they're gonna use in court on you. Right. Correct. And then you're gonna be crying when your baby mom out there fucking boo-boo mm-hmm. because he's home. No, it ain't gonna be baby leg. Baby leg. Yeah. And you tra- you call in the crib talking about you, oh, oh, my daughter, you ain't bringing my, nigga, you ain't really trying to see your daughter because you could have stayed out there with your daughter. Mm-hmm. Right. So, so that shit be just like, Motherfuckers be goofy, and I just be trying to give people another example because I got to go, you understand, I got to go up against 10,000 motherfucking posts against a day of real nigga shit. Mm-hmm. And here it's just me. Oh, that nigga crazy. He tripping. Oh, he tripping. He talking some dumb shit. Mm-hmm. But because we- it's not popular to go against the fucking grain. Right. And, and, and it's not, and even though what I'm saying is it's not popular to say, yo, bro, go ahead and live. Like, you know you could, you could live. You know it's a life outside of that hood shit you operating you know it's a big ass world out there. Right. But what happened to us in the ghetto a lot of times, and a lot of times, the children is penalized due to our lack of due to our, our lack of exposure and our ignorance. Mm. That's why these kids be getting, they growing up in a fucked up situation, is mm-hmm. me, because your daddy ignorant, your mom ignorant, mm-hmm. and, and I'm not saying ignorant, but but they just don't know certain stuff and they, right. they don't know enough stuff to bring you into this world. Right. And then they get lack of exposure. They didn't been nowhere, they didn't do nothing to be able to give you that. You know how a lot of people, uh, when, when you get older and you have a child, you know, you in your 30s, you whatever, you're more established, you're more traveled, you're more experienced. Mm-hmm. 
So now you can put more protection on the baby. Rather it's, rather it's uh, making sure, you know, they're in a better environment, making sure you got finances to make sure they go to the best schools and, all you know, certain zones and, and make sure you can put away for college, make sure they had credit growing up. And it's just certain much game that you get when you're older and you got exposure. Right. So now when we carrying this badge of ignorance, oh, yeah, we represent this. I represent that. I re- yeah, this the shit. All the, all the mentalities and them outlooks are dumb little shit. That we say that belong to black people, mm-hmm. that should be penal. I'm talking about that should be penalizing yeah. the fucking kids. It's all the young. It's all the real niggas out there. When they go to jail, all of them done cried themselves to sleep at night. Cause yeah. I did. Mm-hmm. All yeah. of them done when, when it's time it to then, go to man. court, and them people got your life in their fucking hands. And it depends on if they woke up on the good side of the bed today or the bad side of the bed today. Whether you are gonna get a twenty to forty or a thirty to sixty. Mm. All the real niggas be scared to death. Because listen, I'm going to tell you like this. It wasn't that I was a super duper real nigga, but I'm going to tell you some real shit. When I went to that penitentiary and, and them gates was opening and I knew that this was, a, this was, the, this was the motherfucking big league, bro. Mm-hmm. This was the motherfucking Hall of Fame game. This wasn't mm-hmm. no mother. This was, the all, this was the all-star, all-criminal shit. This was a real live penitentiary I mm-hmm. went to. I'm saying to myself, I'm scared to death because I'm thinking I'm going to get fucked or something, man. I'm just being real. I'm a little nigga, skinny nigga. Weigh like one, at that time, what I probably weigh, 130? I don't know. I'm just being real. I'm thinking somebody going to take advantage of whatever. So you, because, thought, you, you thought your cakes was on the line? Yeah, hey. I thought my ass was on the line. I'm just being straight up. Right. Niggas ain't going to say that. They ain't going to tell you that part. Right. Hey, a nigga, because in the, in the get, but this, it goes back to the ignorance shit. This the part they ain't going to tell you, was they? No, what do you mean? Was, was your cakes on the line? No, yeah, they, uh-huh. it's always on the line when you go to jail. You think it is. But what I'm saying is this. The part that motherfucker ain't going to tell you and we got to reconnect with, can. You, I got, I'm connecting with the fact of growing up my whole life, the nigga that came on from jail was the shit. Yeah. So that, I, I'm, I, That's going, what you wanted. Going to jail. Unconsciously, we be wanting that. Right. Because we're educated based off of what we the fuck seeing. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, ho, oh, I'm not, you know, you're not saying it. You just go, go past that. That, that, that trail so but I'm one of the dudes I said no I'm gonna switch that up when I come home from jail I'm gonna tell niggas this shit real like mm-hmm. that shit real it's fucked up being away from now 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 to that to that and I got a point to make but is that considered snitching or is that what? considered putting people on oh no I'm putting niggas on I ain't exactly. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't informing on nobody case or nothing I'm Correct. putting niggas on it's fucked up in there that's dumb shit what the fuck is you doing right tighten the fuck up because I gotta tell you and I gotta tell you in a way that you're gonna you I gotta talk to you in a way that you understand. Right. When I'm telling this nigga, it costs too much to be a criminal. Stop the dumb shit, bro. They can relate to that. Right. If I'm telling them, stop, don't do that, go to school, uh, they're not trying to hear that dumb shit. I'm not mm-hmm. coming with a suit. I'm coming with a uniform that's digestible, the uniform that's rec- recognizable in right. the ghetto. So when you see me, my sweat, my Yeezys on, whatever, or you see me, I'm popping that shit off like the rapper. Mm-hmm. But you know, I'm telling you some shit that, that's going against what a lot of them is saying. Right. Mm-hmm. And, I, and, and, and even with that, I still listen to the shit. You know what I mean? Because I grew up. That's a part of the. Uh, that's a part of our culture, the music. But at the same time, I ain't. I can't say. All right, fences, Cam. You grew up listening to rap music. A bunch of millions of other motherfuckers grew up listening to Mac music. They ain't do no crime. Mm-hmm. They ain't do no dumb shit. I never. Tupac so, never made me feel like I wanted to go shoot some niggas. You know what I mean? All all that type of shit. But I think the <laughs> thing that the thing that has to be said here is the issue for me is these kids. They believe what they're seeing, and what they're seeing is not real. It's definitely Meaning, not real. If I'm seeing my favorite rapper rap about money, cars, clothes, and hoes, and you see him, you follow him on Instagram, and he has money that he's put into his ear, he has jewelry that you don't know if it's real or not. Fake. <laughs> and you think that for you to be liked, for you to be accepted, you have to have this and they aren't balling like that. No. They fucked up. They 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 falsify a lifestyle that they're not even living for real because let's be honest. And I always ask my kids, my my biological kids, my children as well as my kids that I come in contact with all the time with my 707 uh All-Star team, mm-hmm. how many rappers own their own house? Probably, that's, that's a, that's prob- a story. probably, yeah. probably, realistically. Percentage, out of 100%. 20%, maybe 15, 20%, maybe. 15, 20. And we all know who that 15 and 20% Absolutely. is. Absolutely. If you ain't been rapping for a decade, albums coming out, content coming out, 
it's it's a highly likely chance. Mm-hmm. Highly that they're not there is there is a silver lining in there. There's a mole. There are certain people that's just like okay, he got it, whatever. Mm-hmm. But people think that you know when and and I'm just using jewelry stores as an example. They're posting them counting money at the counter. Boom, 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 boom. You know, they think they really got it like that when they don't. Mm-mm. And I'm like, as an athlete, we got it like that. Really we, got it like but that. But we can't really post it. And I'm like, and I tell everybody who comes into my life, money, hard, cold cash, that don't move me. Mm-mm. Start posting your bank account. Mm. Mm. Talk heavy. You see what I'm saying? Mm. Start, start posting that and, right. and then see how people shut up. Because right. if you got $2,000 in your bank account and you got $100,000 in the, in the shoebox, you still broke. You, and, yeah, and, and first of all, motherfucker and, and, told me and ten million, ten million followers on Instagram. You still you broke. Still, you broke. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's call a spade a spade. You broke mm-hmm. mentally too. Absolutely, yes. because you're fronting. Yeah, a motherfucker told me if you know exactly how much money you got, you ain't got no money. Mm. Welcome to another episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game Business yeah. Spotlight where we bring people to you that's going to give you game. I'm talking about one thing about this business spotlight, what we love about it, we could be in the airport, we could be in the mm. grocery store, everywhere mm. we mm. have a sneaker store. I don't care where we at. There's always somebody run up with me. Oh, man, I saw Alex get honey. Oh, man, I saw him for honey. Oh, man, I seen Neil David. Oh, man, I seen. They always coming to us telling us about somebody that they seen. They gave them some game that they utilized and they took. They was like, yo, man, that was easy. I signed up, got that information, and now I'm off here. Now I'm off there. Now I'm off there. I always say, Shout out to my uh, nephew, Rap. You know, he's seen Lil Rap. He's seen uh, him 500. Now he got his yes, own credit he business. He's doing things. He even did some stuff for me. Hold he's on. Making 17 years old. Uh, yep. This me right here. Yeah. 17 years yes. old. Shout out to Rap. He watched the episode. Him 500. Do credit now. Got him a Benz. Still in high school. Tearing it the fuck up. Shout mm. out to Rap. Shout Rab, out to him. Man. But one day, the day, we're talking about my man Marv. One thing about Marvin, man, Path of Prosperity, he's not playing no games. See, None. it's a different in this game right here, right? And what you need to do, you need to sign up to get the free ebook right now, Path of Prosperity, the ebook for Marvin and them. What you need to do, you need to text MWG 877-762-3083. 877-762-3083. Text MWG. They're going to give you a free ebook and he's going to give you the game. One thing he's going to teach you is three type of people in this world. You got a debtor, you got a saver, you got the wealth creator. Now, debtor, saver, wealth creator. Marvin. Give them the game. Tell them what you got going on and tell them how you're going to give them value that's going to value their life and take them to another level. All right, Amplify no, their pockets. No yes. fluff, no fluff. We about to just give you the game just straight. So what I'm about to teach you is how, how wealthy people use life insurance, bro, to, to hide the ta- shelter their taxes, you know, shelter from creditors and just go out and just start creating passive residual income and making their money work for them multiple times. You just said it, bro. It's three different type of people. You got the debtor, you got the savior, you got the wealth creator. What the debtor does, they go into debt, and then they spend their life trying to pay it back. They go into debt again, then they spend their life trying to pay it back. What do you mean? When you back. say go into debt, they get all these loans, credit cards. They so, so they go out and they get the credit cards, and there's nothing wrong with the credit cards, but they don't use it the right way. They ain't doing it like him 500 teaching them where they're yeah. going out and buying, getting passive income. They're doing it and buying diminishing properties, and then they, and they paying it back slowly. And then they try to get back to zero. In fact, their number one goal is to get back to zero. But there's homeless people on the street that are, that are at zero. They don't mean they're doing good financially. You know okay. what I'm saying? Okay. So, the debtor is on that rent race. They can never get out. Then you got the saver. The saver think they a lot better than the debtor, but I'm going to show you they ain't no better. I mean, they a little better, but they saving, 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 and then they're going to pay cash. Then they saving that they're going to pay cash. The problem is, is every time they just pay cash, they actually going further back to zero line. They went up just to go back to zero. Now they losing opportunity costs. Now they got to wait to build it back. You said opportunity costs. What's that? Opportunity costs is the money that you could have been making had you not spent it. So if I got $100,000 and I'm making 5%, next year I got one hundred and five. If I got $100,000 and I spend fifty, dollars the next year I'm only making interest on $50,000 because I spent that money. Well, if I never spent that money or if I leveraged that money, now I'm still making money on that $100,000. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. All right, now, so, boy, you said the, 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 the debtor? Yep, that's the debtor. That's the saving. But the wealth creator, the wealth creator is going to be good. The wealth creator, they still going to grow their money like the saver. And they're going to still spend money like the debtor. The only difference is, is they using leverage. So they building their money up. Then they borrowing against that money. So they got their $100,000 or whatever it is growing over here. They got their real estate or churro that they borrowed against it growing over here. So I'm going to teach you how to do that in the most effective way possible to grow your wealth tax free. And how did you get in the game with the whole insurance and understanding that? And- Bro, I got in the game because my grandma lost a lot of money. 
Um, a financial advisor told her about something. She lost like 50% of her money when the market went down. She had no long-term care insurance. She died feeling like she was a burden on the family. I was like, I got to do something different. So I ended up going into the financial industry. Then I ended up finding out, man, I need to be finding out what the wealthy people are doing. I started interviewing millionaires, billionaires, reading a lot of books, getting my mind right. And then I found out that the industry wasn't it teaching these principles that I'm about to teach y'all right now. And, and yep. all right, so if, if you say get with these companies, insurance, can, how do how much money do I need? Like, Yeah, I mean, to really build a bank. I'm going to teach you how to create your own bank. This is what this is about. To create your own bank, you really need about $500 a month mm-hmm. or more to really get to a point where you can build up enough leverage to borrow against it. So can I go ahead and t- teach what yeah, it is? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So I'm going I'm to teach the game. So this is how they use life insurance to actually become wealthier, tax-free, tax-free millionaires. So they're going to build up pr- a properly structured policy. Properly structured policy means when you get your insurance policy, it needs to be permanent, either whole life or index universal life. And you got to build it in a way that you got the lowest amount of death benefit because you don't really care that much about the death benefit. When you get the lowest amount of death benefit, you're going to get the highest amount of cash that's going to go straight to that policy. Now, when that cash goes straight to that policy, it's tax-free now forever, which means you never got to pay taxes. It's going to keep growing tax-free. It's going to grow tax-free. You can use it tax-free. It's completely tax-free. Mm. The difference is it's going to keep... How does that sound? Tax-free, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We hate paying taxes, right? Shit, it's it's saying, fuck so, me up. Yeah, <laughs> I don't even know that, Nick. Yeah, we're going. <laughs> so, so here you are, bro. You building this up, and now let's say slowly you build it up, and you get to that 50000 100000 Now you got that 50000 You know it's growing no matter what, right? So now you say, if I know it's growing no matter what, let me go ahead and borrow against that. Let me go ahead and take a policy loan. I'm going to borrow 30000 and I'm going to go out and get this real estate property. Now that's going to be cash flowing me. I'm going to leverage that to get a $200,000 real estate property. Now I'm making $1,000 a month cash. And that $100,000 is still growing like I never touched it. So if I wanted to, I can take that cash flow and pay it back off that loan to have the ability to borrow more in the future. But here's the, here's the secret, bro. If you don't want to, you don't even got to pay it back. Ain't nobody reporting you to the credit bureau. Ain't nobody saying, hey, he ain't pay it back, so we're going to lower his credit score. None of that. If you don't pay it back, they simply going to subtract it from your death benefit when you die. So if I got $100,000 and I borrow thirty, I still got $100,000. My death benefit, though, is five hundred. dollars mm-hmm. So now when I die, they're going to subtract that 30 from amount, the 500. That 30 plus a little interest from the 500. But I still mm. got that money. Mm-hmm. So let me tell you a game, a trick that I play with this, man. Like I do, I do some stock options, right? I made $300,000 on GameStop, bro. I, I, bro, I, I helped five people make a million dollars in a day. Yeah, that's, the, that's what we heard. That's how we heard about you. Yeah. Yeah. To, me, to, to bring you on here. Yeah. Well, he's like, wait. And, and the person we was talking to was like, yo, he the real deal, man. He helped five motherfuckers make a million dollars in a day. Like, a day. So I was like, Break Damn. that down. So, so this is what one play that I did with, with options, right? So when G- GameStop, I don't know if y'all remember, GameStop yes, was just yeah. sinking. Yes. I mean, it was going up like crazy. The little people was winning. And I knew the big people, they weren't going to keep letting the little guy win. So it had went up by 130 points, and I knew it was going to go down by 100 points. So I borrowed $100,000 from that policy. I said, I'm going to go ahead and do a one-day play on GameStop, which means that if it goes down by 100 points, I make $300,000. So I did the hundred thousand dollar option play. Mm-hmm. It went down. I got my hundred thousand dollars back plus an additional three hundred thousand dollars. I just paid my hundred thousand dollars back. So now I'm three hundred thousand dollars up. And you but only let, did it for one day. You one knew, day. You knew that. You knew today. Shit, Ray, get crazy. Just one day. But here's the deal. Now you might say, well, that's still risky because if you would have lost, you would have lost hundred a hundred thousand dollars. Now. Would I really had lost a hundred thousand no, dollars? Because they would take it out your death. Woo, there you go. And yeah. my death benefit was like a million. So right. worst case scenario, nine hundred thousand. Worst case scenario, my money's still growing as if I never touched it, right. and it's just attracted from my death benefit. Best case scenario, I done made three hundred thousand dollars, and that's what I did. Another play I did, bro. I owned four hundred twenty-two units of real estate. Damn, yeah. Four hundred twenty-two real units of real estate. I owned two hundred and ten in Atlanta. I owned seventy-six in St. Louis. What I did was I borrowed against that policy, bro. I went ahead and I did the down payment to get a 76 unit. And now I'm making a cash flow of a folk. Did you four, pay it back? I haven't paid it back yet. 
Okay, that's you, four to five. Th- now I did pay back that um that GameStop when yeah. I got that hundred thousand dollars, but this one I ain't even pay back. What I'm doing is I'm slowly paying it back. The only reason why I do pay it back, like I know you don't have to, but I still want to pay it back because you want to borrow again. It increases my capacity to borrow right. more in the future. It, right. it strengthens your borrowing. Exactly. Right. Okay. So I want to keep borrowing because now I'm creating money babies. Right. My money working overtime. It's creating pregnant money, mm-hmm. producing money babies over and over and over again. And that's I what like I want. What is money. a money baby? A money baby is when. Like you want your money working for you. So mm-hmm. I want my money to be pregnant because it's always producing more money. Mm-hmm. And then okay. that gonna, they're going to grow up and produce more money. Mm-hmm. So I'm creating generational money mm-hmm. with money that babies. same money. That's that's good money. So yep. at the end of the day, what you need to do to get the, I'm talking about the free and in this ebook, tell them what they're getting in that ebook. So in this ebook, I actually teach you step by step how to create your own bank and how to actually use this to create passive residual income doing things like churro. Airbnb, whatever it is, real estate, whatever you want to do. But I'm going to teach you how to structure it. I'm going to teach you the companies to use. I'm going to teach you where to go to get it set up properly. I'm going to teach you the difference between the debtor saver wealth creator. We breaking it all down. And it's an easy to read book. The great thing about it, it ain't one of these complicated 400 page books. It's something yeah. simple, easy to read. And we giving the game away for free today. And I know y'all show. Hey, hey, That's what I'm I about, heard is usually $39.99 and but you just sold <laughs> Three fucking billion of them. But I'm talking about yeah, to get this. Yeah, yeah. I, I never gave this away for free, by the way. I, don't no. worry about it. Yeah, That's yeah. why you're here. But today, yeah, yeah. to get this ebook, what you need to do, you need to text MWG to 877-762-3083. 877-762-3083 is going to be at the screen. Text that. I'm telling you, you're getting a free ebook, and I'm telling you, man, Path of Prosperity is not playing no game. Marvin is not playing no games. Now, let me let me ask you a question, Marvin. Yep. So, you mean to tell me? I'm just regular Joe. I take this. I build my money up to 20, 30,000. Right, you right, know, right. Because everybody don't have the capacity to have the, you know, the resources to get certain type of money yep. or whatever. I build it up to 20,000. How much can I, and I say, I want to start me uh, uh, a trucking company. I want to, yep. or I want to start me uh, uh, a little, a little recording studio, or I want to start me a podcast, whatever yep. I want to start. How much money can I borrow on that 20,000 that's inside of that insurance? So one is whole life. So other index universal life, whole life insurance is going to grow it at a fixed rate. It's going to be a lower rate of return, like four to five percent. But the benefit is, is that you can borrow after only 30 days. Mm. How much? You can, borrow, you can borrow up to about 95 percent after just 30. So days. if I got 20,000, then I could borrow up to like 95 percent of the 20,000. Yeah, That's yeah. not bad. Dep- depending on depending on the policy you use, some is only up to 60 percent. So you just some <laughs> gives and takes. So we mm-hmm. teach you how to structure correctly. Index universal life. The difference is it's going to grow more because you can make up to 10%, but you can't lose on the downside. So you're going to make more over time, but it might take you two to three years to fully be able to borrow against it. So one is more a longer term approach to borrowing. Another one is a shorter term approach to borrowing. So we're going to help you structure that for sure. But at the end of the day, no matter what you're doing, you're going to be able to borrow. You're going to be able to borrow. But if you're trying to get in the game, the first one you said is the best one. If you're trying to get in, if you're like, damn, you know what? I'm going to use this. I'm going to get in the game with this and I'm going to come and and I'm going to still have that deer. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's and, and, you, and you can set up multiple policies. So the first one, you might be at a place where you're just trying to build, right? But then you start doing these plays that we teach, and then you start bringing in this cash. You don't know what to do with it. You can just go and set up another one at a bigger amount and, and keep running with that play like over and over and over again. That's major. Yeah. That's super major. Yeah. So there's no, there's no uh, amount of policies you can have? No, you can have unlimited. I got six. So, so, you basically saying, so you basically saying, if we can out here, they got the business credit together yep. and they got this insurance credit together. They got unlimited funds to do whatever they need to do. Let me teach you a play. You talked about him 500 earlier. Yeah. Let me teach you a play where you can use a credit game in the insurance game at the same time. Okay. Mm-hmm. So let's say I wanted to go out and I wanted to buy some, something for $30,000, right? I do it on, I, I get my credit right. I go out and I borrow, I mean, I buy it on credit. Now I got all of them points, right? Then I borrow from my insurance policy and pay off that credit card. So now the money that I paid off the credit card with is still growing as if I never touched it. And I got the points from the credit cards at the same time. So, but, but how, do, how long do it take to get the approval <laughs> to get the money from the insurance? Two days. So, you, Two so, days. so, so, so when a person going into it, all they doing is filling out some forms or whatever. Yep. And, and do they have to, that's the thing. You don't even, it's your money. So you ain't even got to fill out no forms. You don't got to get approved for it. You just call the insurance company and say, Hey, I got this much money. I want to borrow this. They say, all right, bet. Sign this one form. They ACH you the money within two days. Mm-mm-mm. For those that don't know what ACH is, tell them. Oh, yeah. ACH means they transferring Trans- it to your bank. Mm-hmm. Right there, like, 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 boom. like fast. Bam. Like, hey, I need, hey, 
I'm out of town. I need to do this. I need this money. All right, Brett, bet it'll be to you in forty eight hours. And you look at your bank bank account, money there. Sock it to your pocket. So like now, you, it ain't your money. It's other people's money. It's the insurance company so, money. So now you went back. You paid the thirty back. Wah, 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 wah. Yeah, your credit all jumping like your credit break dancing. Yeah, and now you win the game. Right. You win the game. Don't yep. be out here borrowing no motherfucking credit because you're in Vegas trying to buy hookers and gamble. Yeah, make yeah, sure it's, make, make sure, sure you, you buy doing assets. the right shit. Right, you got to buy assets, not liabilities. Motherfucker, be, I can take yeah. I can take a little fifteen off my uh my, my insurance. You right, know right, I mean? right. Party in Vegas, no, do the right <laughs> shit. <laughs> we we, we bring shit. it, we bring Marv up here <laughs> to get y'all game. We bring these business spotlights up here to get y'all the game so you could do the right shit. Yeah, don't be, don't be borrowing against your insurance policy. Going to see Poppy in fucking shake, L.A. and all to go, that. To shit. go shake the motherfucking dice, <laughs> right? Ah, put your life on the table once right. again. I get, get, go ahead, go ahead. I'm gonna give him one more play. Come right, on, listen, play. go ahead, go ahead and get that. Listen to get this. Listen to get the text M W G the eight seven 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 six two. 3083 I'm talking about Path to Prosperity. Stop playing. Get this ebook right now. He's going to give you the game, and there's going to be other things that you yep. can connect with him and do whatever. Give us that play. I'm going to give y'all a big picture play because I've been doing this for a while. I want to give y'all a big picture of what you can expect after you've been doing this for a while, right? You might start off small, but now what I did was I just borrowed about for a down payment. I just bought a $2 million crib in Atlanta, right? Mm-hmm. I don't even live in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. So why would I buy a $2 million crib in Atlanta? Here's why. That won my money. It was an insurance company money. I paid the down payment, got the $2 million house, right? I don't even live there, but I rented it out it on, for events and on, and on um, Airbnb, right? It's making me 30 grand a month, right? Yeah. 30 grand a month. I turned a $2 million house on assets. See, when you, when you get your mind right and you and learn oh, to think right. And it's inside of Atlanta. So they go on Airbnb. It's inside of Atlanta. It's beautiful. Atlanta event spaces. I just, I, I just did this play not too long ago. So the, the beautiful part about this is that you can turn any luxury into an asset if you get your mind right, especially when you combine it with this insurance play. You're talking about big money, big money that you're bringing in. I can do this play around the country and start making a million dollars a month in no time. Mm, There's one play. major, man. But listen, man, once again, I need you to text MWG to 877-762-3083. 877-762-3083. Path of Prosperity. Marvin, he's going to hook you up with his new, I'm talking about his ebook that he really sell most of the time, yeah. but he's giving it to everybody. I'm talking about everybody that's watching this. You te- you're getting it for free. You don't mm. have to worry about nothing. But listen, man, before we go, what do you want to say to the people? What what can you give to them to give them that mindset chip or to try to put some, some strength in their mind to try to see what's going on out here? Yeah, I want to say, look, you, it's your ethical responsibility to do the best that you can read, study, and learn how to be wealthy. Like, it ain't about you. It's about your children's children. You want your children's children to look back and say, because of what my grandmother did, because of what my grandfather did, the decisions that they made, our entire, entire family changed. There is no mm-hmm. reason why you can't be like the Rockefellers did when they just created their own. That's how they got their money. They created their own bank. They created family fortune. The same thing I'm teaching you is exactly what the Rockefellers did. So you can be the Rockefeller of your family, but you got to take some action. Are you ready to take that action? Are you ready to get started? That's why you got to go and you got to go ahead and download that free giveaway because I'm ready to help you to transform your life. But are Mm -hmm. you ready? Yeah, you got to be ready, man. I'm Wallow 267. This is my man Marvin from Path of Prosperity. This is Gilly the King. This is, once again, another million dollars worth of game, business spotlight. Yeah. Listen, man, we bringing you the information to help strengthen your mind, to help strengthen your bank account. What you want to do, the choice is yours, and it's just like that. Right! This episode of the Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by Coinbase. Listen, if you're looking to level up, I'm telling you, you want to level up your portfolio, your financial portfolio, it's always good to diversify. Why not think about cryptocurrency? Backed by the world leading investors, Coinbase keep your portfolio safe and secure while adding crypto into the mix. Listen, right now what you need to do is, I'm talking about you're going to get $10 in Bitcoin free. I'm talking about free when you sign up to Coinbase right now. Go to coinbase.com slash dollars, D-O-L-L-A-Z. When you sign up today, limited time only. I'm talking about limited Coinbase trusted. I'm talking about trusted Easy to use platform, buy, sell, spin cryptocurrency. I'm talking about Coinbase. What are you working for? I'm talking about millions of people in over a hundred countries trust Coinbase. What you need to do right now, you need to sign up. Once again, you're going to get $10 in Coinbase. What you need to do is go to coinbase.com slash dollars, D-O-L-L-A-Z. Right now, when you sign up, you get $10. What's your name? What are you waiting for? I'm just telling you what a motherfucker And that's real. And, and you know what's so different? You know what's so different from back, back then to now? What was crazy is that you only got sprinkles of the of your favorite artists because it wasn't no social. 
So if you had to wait till a video come out or interview on MTV. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like you could just see this life every day. So it's beating in your head every day. Mm-hmm. And if you're a kid, like this social media is fucking the kids up. They're going through depression. Uh, their pictures not getting liked. They're getting emotionally fucked up. Mm-hmm. They hurting themselves. It's a lot of shit going on with kids. Mm-hmm. That's why I tell people, check on your fucking kids. Because what happened is people would just give their kids the phone. And the phone could be raising their kids. Because think about it. With that phone, a kid could order their own food. Spend your credit card on Amazon. They ain't never got to leave their room. Play the games. But they also could be on the phone with a motherfucking predator that's posing as a friend. Man. Mm-hmm. That's why you got to check bro. these phones and you really got to be on them and really talk to your kids. You know how many people, and, and I, I was talking yesterday and I was telling people, I said, listen, you know how many, and a big audience of people, I said, you know how many of y'all, you remember back in the day, person dropped their kid off of school, the teacher gave them an update. They don't even drop their kids off. Kids taking Ubers, kids take, they don't even see the teacher. They don't, Go to the average parent. They don't know the, they don't know all the kids' teachers. Man, in church. Go ahead. Church. Right? And it was it was so crazy. It was Youth Sunday. And I'm a person who I try to and I'm and I'm gonna call myself out. I haven't been to church all year. Okay. And the reason is my like my seven oh seven all star team, we practice on Sundays at a time where it's kind of competing with church. And I and I apologize for saying that, but I do get some devotional in week day by weekday, every day. Like, I'm a dude, bro. You, you you drive with me, bro. I'm listening to gospel music. I'm listening to something on YouTube. And that's where, like, the respect came from, especially y'all, the content that y'all put out, because it's really impactful. Thank you. Um, but at the end of the day, it was a discussion in church where the parents was on a panel. And the kids, they had asked questions like, who's, who's my English teacher? Who, who's my sociology teacher? How many classes am I taking? What classes am I taking? And it was wowing to see, because I wasn't one of the parents that was up there, but I started having me scratching my head like, damn, I don't even know that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Mm-hmm. When parent-teacher conference, I used to cringe, because I was like, man, my mama about to come up here, and my dad, they, he ain't got the time because he's working, and mm-hmm. my mama ever had to come to the school. It's a wrap. Man, bro, what are we talking about, I'm man? Dead ass in this slap. <laughs> I'm getting slapped upside my head. Hey, I'm getting embarrassed. Get yeah. Because, you know, it was it was it was the thing that everybody knew what was going on. Miss Newton, you mm-hmm. know, your son is lacking at XYZ. Mm-hmm. You know, we need him to be better at this. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, it's almost like even if it's high school, it's still daycare. Mm-hmm. Like they just shipping their kids off to you know, an institution just for that time being, and they they don't they don't want to they don't want to be a part of it as a parent. Mm-hmm. And then you think of it, time goes on, time goes on, and then all of a sudden, boom, they eighteen years old, and I'm just like, okay, now what you gonna do? Mm-hmm. Do you want to go to college? No. Nah. Do you want to go? You know, in the workforce? No. Nah, I'm just chill. Uh uh-uh. uh, ain't good enough. Hey, you want to know what's so crazy? My son mm-hmm. had a had a had a homie right, and uh, he graduated high school. They down at the studio, and uh, I say, so, so what you doing now? And he said, uh, yeah, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just, you know, I'm gonna just be take a little minute and chill. I said, chill. I said, nigga, you just graduated high school, your fucking life just started. What you mean you chill? Up the beginning. And he know the story. I looked yes. right at my son and said, you can't hang with this nigga no more. In front of him, right in front of him. I said, <laughs> I said, this nigga's going to jail. Now, my son sitting there, he like looking at me. Never like, forget this, man. He going to jail. Like, yeah, like I'm tripping. Like, what the fuck? Like, he looking at me like, what you mean he going to jail? Like, because niggas that got too much time on their hand and nothing to do. Idle time. It's going to fuck the jail. Uh, that was three and a half years ago, and he did two years in prison. It's crazy. So, I had to look at my son while his homie was in jail and said, damn, it's funny how. I know what the fuck I'm talking about, huh? And I tell I tell parents all the time that's a part of our that's a part of our organization, uh, Cam Newton Seven v Seven, um, and I always tell them we need parents to start being parents, yeah, and not homeboys and not home they homeboys like a motherfucker. Like mm-hmm. when I was in high school, man, I used to get teased a lot because like my my father's a preacher, mm-hmm. right? And he would give me a curfew, and my, my man, my father with me. At the time, he was a man of few words. Mm-hmm. Cam, you better be at the house at 9 p.m. Cam, you better be in the house at 8 p.m. And whether he was home or not, I knew at 745, 
if my destination wasn't home, I knew I had to report to somebody. Mm -hmm. And he gave me structure. He mm -hmm. did. Like my mom, my mom was a softer one, but she still wasn't weak. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When they spoke, I listened. Mm -hmm. I heard and I adhered to what the fuck that they told me to do. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, it's too many parents that's out here just got this this visual that, all right, they'll figure it out. No, bro. And people is trying to, they trying to live the vacancies of their childhood. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, like, like a lot of people wasn't the shit growing up. So now you could be the shit. You can get your body done. If you a dude, you get some money, get some drip. Mm -hmm. Everybody is living that I'm the shit moment. And they like, I'm going to buy my kids shit. They could be cool. You got the new iPhone. You got this. Go over there and sit down. Mm -hmm. I'm turning up. Right. I'm going on these trips. Mm -hmm. I'm showing my ass. But even then to that point too, while it was like, a lot of people who are famous now wasn't the shit growing up. Yep. So when they you talk about good about the, when you talk about sucker shit, yeah, mm -hmm. you talking to a suck. I don't care how many likes, I don't care how many albums, I don't care how many touchdowns, I don't care how many basketball hoops, I don't care how many businesses, whatever, bro. You do, you can still be a rich sucker. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A, but first of all, it's more rich suckers than it is. Rich niggas that's not suckers. You see what Let's I'm be for real. Because most of these motherfuckers was, okay, a person like Cam, he was in the limelight his whole life. Right. So even as a kid, he was the truth. He knew how it felt for somebody to cheer for him. Right. He knew how it felt to walk off the field. And they like, young, and you the truth. Yeah. You the real deal, man. You, you, the shit. you the shit. Some people don't feel that until they 40. Right. They don't feel that until they, they actually get a good job right. that's making some good money. Now they got good credit. You grown as shit. Now you out here doing all the shit that the young people doing because you never got a chance to do it. Well, buddy, uh, life yeah. passed you by. This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is also brought to you by one of my favorites, Roman Deli. Mm. One thing about this Roman Deli, it's easy to swallow mm -hmm. pill. I'm talking about the taste. I'm simple, clean taste. This is a really easy way to support your physical activity, brain health, mm -hmm. your immune system, mm -hmm. and your heart health. No prescription required. You no. don't need no, you know I'm talking about you don't need no prescription. The Roman Deli is coated. I'm talking about coated with a slick coating of natural peppermint oil. So there's no unpleasant aftertaste. Remember, so I'm talking about you got to remember this. If you don't remember nothing, nothing. I'm talking about this supplement. I'm talking about this supplement is not a replacement for healthy diet, exercise, good sleep. You're still got to go. I'm talking about you still got to go get your greens and get your steps mm. in. I'm talking about all of that. I'm talking about, and guess what? These statements that I have made had not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, to treat, cure, or prevent any diseases. Nothing. Listen, right now you can start your day off right with $15 off your first order. What you need to go, you need to go to GetRoman.com slash daily hyphen multivitamins. GetRoman.com slash daily hyphen multivitamin and get your first, I'm talking about off your first order, $15 off. What are you waiting for? Get Roman daily. But even then, <laughs> when I was growing up too, and I'll say this, and this is a true testament of who my friends and who my circle was, like when I grew up, I never smoked weed. I never smoked weed a day of my life, mm -hmm. ever. True story. I love the aroma of weed yeah. because I was I was around <laughs> it. it. It's 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 soothing to me. And as I start educating myself, there's something real about uh, aromatherapy. Yeah, you know, because it's crazy. I was having this discussion with my brother like a couple years ago, and I had a diffuser pumping out marijuana. You know what I'm saying? How did, you, how did it make you feel? You coming? You, but now I replace the marijuana with sage, mm -hmm. like that instant kind mm -hmm. of okay. smell. It's the smoke. Mm -hmm. But when you had when you had the diffuser pumping the marijuana, did it give you like like was was you feeling it? What did, what did it do? No, it didn't. It was just like it's now like I replaced that not not replaced it, but that's why I smoke cigars. Mm -hmm. You know, it just allows me to think. You know what I'm saying? It just allows me to get into this realm of like, okay, let me think about what I'm doing. And that could be the, the same case for people that smoke weed or smoke yes. cigarettes or smoke uh, whatever, do whatever. It could be, it could be eating Cheetos. It could be, you know, drinking wine. It could be whatever. But if it becomes a distraction and it starts affecting your everyday life, then that's when it becomes bad for you, right? It's using you. You're not using it, right? Mm -hmm. And I want to go back to something where, it was a, a wise man once told me, bro, you never want another person to have your destiny in their hands. 
And when you're talking about facing 20 to 30 years in life, your destiny mm. is in somebody else's hands. Yeah. Yeah. And when we're out here having idle time as a 17 year old kid who may dropped out as a 25 year old dude, that's just like, bro, man, fuck the world, bro. I'm out here by myself. Da, 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 da. That's a dangerous mindset because you're going to be provoked to do something that when you look back at it, you're going to regret it. All right. You're going to regret it. And right. then you're going to look at it where it's like, bro, I need the judge to have leniency. I need oh, the yeah, police bitch. officers mm -hmm. to have leniency mm -hmm. on me. And it's like, damn, like I put myself in this situation where there could have been prevented where, all right, now take that person that you look at and you say, damn, bro, you inspire me. Use his content to push you to that next thing. You don't have to be on the front, the front of the forefront to be able to get the same money as the person from the forefront, mm -hmm. ask these record labels. But the problem is, yep. everybody want to be popular. Everybody want to be the rapper, but don't nobody want to be the producer. Yep. Don't yep. nobody want to be the A&R. Yep. Don't nobody want to be the manager. Yep. Don't nobody want to be this. They don't want to be that. They want to be the dude in the back that's like, you know, got the blue check and yeah, you know, hey, that's so-and-so, that's this, that's mm -hmm. that. When they walk around like, bro, I'm at a point in my life now where it's like I can go places by myself mm -hmm. because I fear nobody. That's one. And number two, I know my, my face is clean and I know my intentions. Right. So when a person may approach me and they may have ill intentions, it's like, hey, bro, what you need? Mm -hmm. Right. If that situation come up and I'm knocking on wood saying it, if somebody comes up to me with that hammer, I'm like, bro, just tell me what you need. Because ain't nothing that I, in my possession that's worth dying for. Right. Mm -hmm. If you want this, if you want this watch, you know, this is G-Shock right here. I got Rolexes. I got Richard Mills. I got Pet X. I got all those things. If you want those, bro, I'm going to give it to you. That's, that nothing. that's nothing. nothing to me. Because it's yeah. not worth me dying. It's not and worth, it's not worth no. you going to prison no. for a thousand years. No. It's not that deep. No, it's, it's not, not that serious. It's not. Because now me having seven children, I now know the true meaning of what life is. I found that out early, and I'm still learning as the day goes mm -hmm. on, that it's like, bro, what's it to me to live this lavish lifestyle and... Cashmere St. Newton, my youngest son. That's a hell of a name, too. Saint he don't, Newton, he don't nice. have he don't have those same benefits. Mm -hmm. So it's like when I look at this, the thing, like when you walked in, I hope you got an aesthetic that was like, damn, this shit here. Oh, this shit nice. Yeah. But the biggest flex to me is like, this ain't even for me. It's for him. It's for him. Mm -hmm. And I gotta create something else for my other children. Mm -hmm. It's it's is I was telling you this over the phone. I was like, bro. I'm having a hard time with my son right now, which he has an MRI today on his knees, and he's in high school, and I, I can see it in his eyes. He's like, man, I want to play basketball. I want to play basketball. And I'm like, son, I sacrificed so much time to be away, and I'm not able to be around my kids every single day, but that doesn't mean I'm not having a plan for my kids every day. So that when you do leave high school or if you do want to go to college, there is a foundation set for you that you can say, all right, boom, I can do that without sports. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to make it in this field. Like my father once told me, he was like, son, I don't care what you do, but whatever you do, be the best at it. Mm -hmm. Be the best firefighter. Mm -hmm. Be the best lawyer. And look at it like this. If you're the best at something, you're going to get compensated for what you want to get compensated for. And if it's that, if it's the energy, if it's the fulfillment, you're going to get compensated for that. If it's the money, you're going to get compensated for that. Mm -hmm. Think about the shittiest job, mm -hmm. waste management, mm -hmm. picking up trash. The person who's the best trash picker upper in the world is a billionaire. He's the best at it, right? So a lot of people, they are ignorant to the fact that I got to have a face. People got to know who I am. And like the life that I live now, I like, bro, it's two types of people in this world. It's that person who gets money and they want everybody to know it. Mm -hmm. And there's also a person who gets money and they don't want nobody to know. Mm -hmm. I'm that person now. I'm, old, I'm, I'm wise enough to know. I don't want nobody to know my next move. Mm -hmm. Right. I want to make a move and be like, boom, damn, like, what the f Cam did that shit? Like, what the fuck he was doing? Like, how the fuck did that shit happen? Mm -hmm. Like a Jay-Z. Mm -hmm. Like, when Jay-Z have a, when a deal gets done and it comes across, you know, whatever social media thing or however we get equipped with our, with our knowledge, it's like, damn, how the fuck LeBron did that? Mm -hmm. 
And he didn't do it by just chilling. You know what I'm saying? On his off day, he probably had to sacrifice some time to say, you know what, son, I can't be with you today. I got to take a business meeting. I got to go on a Zoom call for the betterment of the brand, for mm-hmm. the betterment of the, this family. And if you see that day in and day out, and a lot of people don't use their resources to that, they'd rather say, bro, give me, give me, give me, mm-hmm. rather than saying, give me an opportunity so I can prove. They'd mm-hmm. rather say, give me some money rather than saying, give me a connect that I just want to learn. Because it's a wise proverb that says, you give a man a meal, you satisfy his hunger for that day. Mm -hmm. You teach a man to cook, you satisfy his hunger for the rest of his life. Right. But you know, a lot of times with black people, you know, our problem is we want now, we don't want later. And entitlement is major. Mm. Tight, that entitlement mm. shit. Oh, Cam, you from my you from our neighborhood, you owe me. You from my city, you owe me. Oh, I sat next to you in school. I know you don't remember my name, but you owe me. Yeah. Oh, that nigga ain't real. That nigga don't do nothing for nobody. He do something for his seven kids and his mom and his dad. Like, he do something for them. That's that's his responsibility. Right. Yeah. They they the ones he owe. He don't like, but we don't get that. And as Mm-mm. our people, we always we quick to say what somebody ain't doing for somebody, but we ain't doing shit for ourselves. We ain't doing it for ourselves. How you ain't doing nothing for How you depending on, like, especially adult, you adult. How the fuck you worrying about another adult taking care of you? I don't understand that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that but logic But that's major is in the up. culture, man. Man, it is. Big. That's your major. In and I, I, had to, I had to speak to my children, you know, this was two weeks ago, right? And I had my children with me. And, man, I, I built the aesthetic right. I got a fire, set them down. I'm drinking wine. They sitting back, they on their phone. I took the phones. Yeah. You know, because at the end of the day, you're going to have what you pay for. Did you pay for that phone? No, no, you didn't. So I hand it over. Yeah, let me get that. You see what I'm saying? So I want your undivided attention. So I gave them the scenario. I say, listen, if I were to pass away right now, how much money should I, should I leave you? Oh, uh, none. I said, you're right. I don't have to leave you nothing. Oh, I love what, what, what son said that? What y'all said that? The oldest, Jaden. Well, Jaden, I call I call him China, right? And then Shakir, Kiri, I'm having a I'm having a conversation with them. He's now 16. His birthday was on the 18th. Shakira's birthday was on the 17th. Mm. And it's like when I have those type of conversations, I'm literally making them understand that nobody owes you nothing. Shit in Shit. life. It's my, it's my, it's my responsibility mm-hmm. to be a father to you, mm-hmm. right? Because you're my seed. And even, even to that degree, when I'm no longer here, you can't expect me to leave nothing for you. I need to teach you how to cook, right? Rather than giving you a meal. Yeah. And you looking, it's like you either an alley cat or a house cat. Mm-hmm. A house cat going to wait around until that warm milk comes by the owner. That mm-hmm. alley cat got to go get it every single day. Mm-hmm. Every day. And the bottom line is I got to teach you how to be the Walmarts. Mm-hmm. Because if, if I was only going to take one generation of Walmarts to fuck everything up. Mm-hmm. So and they tried, too. They right. tried. We've been running this shit like this for this many years. When we pass this shit down, we need y'all to keep it going. Right. Yep. So when y'all pass it down... That Walmart to still be going on for 500 years from now, mm-hmm. and we ain't going bankrupt because we had three fucking cousins and nephews and brothers who was all fucking dumb idiots, right. and, and the dumb shit brought the whole right. company yeah. down. Right. So, you know, that's how you got to teach them. You got to teach them to fend for themselves. Right. And at the end of the day, they know you, they, they getting left something. Of course. But when they get left, it is what you going to do with it. How you can do it. It's what you going to do with it. It ain't supposed to be, oh, daddy died. Let's go get three Phantoms and a Rolls Royce and a Ferrari Uh and a Lamborghini and buy all the clubs out of a goddamn night. No. No. Yeah, no. Man, walk light, man. (laughs) Walk light. Because I live live, live a, a simple life that's very discreet. I don't, I don't want people to see me because I don't want people to see me. Right? I want, I'm, I'm seen because I want to be seen. Mm-hmm. That's, That's a deep saying right there. See what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't want like, people to see me because I don't want man, people listen, to see bro. me. Yeah. I make money. I don't make money to let people know. I make money to completely vanish. Oh, shit, Cam here? Like, oh, where, I ain't see him. 
It ain't for you to be seen. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And with that, in the same setting, I had to, like, literally ask him. I'm like, Kiri, what's the most money you ever seen? Uh, about 2000 Say, I say, China, what's the most money you ever seen? About 5000 I go up in the safe, right? Bring out $10,000 right there. Boom. Count it out. Boom. Bop, 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 bop. So then I'm starting saying, they have separate moms, by the way. I say, so... That's ten thousand dollars right there. How much do I give your mom? I don't know. How much do I give your mom? I don't know. Now, when you start realizing how much I'm giving them, right? They start saying, "Well, how much do you have for yourself?" Now you start seeing the responsibility. Now, not to say when I pick you guys up, you say, "Man, Daddy, I want Chick Fil A. I want Zaxby's. I want McDonald's. I want this." Now, pull another hundred off that. All right. Boom. Hey, daddy, I got in a fight at school. I, got, I need stitches. We only got insurance, quote unquote. Then you got to pay the hospital bill, right? Pill another five, six, seven hundred dollars off of that. Now, how much money do I have to spend for myself? It's two hundred dollars left. And they start seeing like, oh, shit. I'm not ready to be an adult yet. Right. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like these like these folks have to start knowing the value of a dollar, but not only that, they have to start realizing as I'm getting old, I have to start admonishing and recognizing, you know, real life situations. Because I'm not gonna be sixteen forever. Right. I'm not gonna be seventeen forever. And you don't realize now you're living the best years of your life because you don't got no responsibilities. No responsibilities. Only thing I'm asking you to do is keep your room clean. Listen to your mom. Listen to me. You know and go saying? to school and, and get your grades. go to fucking school, bro. <laughs> that's it. I ain't actually, that's easy. That's, that's five, like easy. three, four things. Because cause listen, because because when you come in this house in this nice house and you open it up and you weren't working out that refrigerator door and the pantry doors all the time and you, you know you just dropping clothes on the floor you know what I mean and uh you know, you, you wearing that electric out and all that shit. That <laughs> you, you don't forget all the motherfucking them them uh, them apps, all them app Netflix, uh, Hulu, uh, all them apps, HBO and, Max, and, and the games. You know, they charge they charging the games to the. You know, they get family the game. plan. I'm getting charged for that. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, your mama bought it, but she's using my money. Mm -hmm. Amazon, Amazon. Come on now. Like, like a lot of people, they don't know how to compartmentalize that, and that's the biggest downfall mm -hmm. with a kid who faces the money, but he's physically rich, but emotionally broke. Mm. And that's tough. That's hard to realize, like, damn, like, what the fuck is really going on with our culture? What is the fuck is really going on with our community? Because people don't know. And it's time for the adults to start empowering their children to understand the value of certain life lessons from money to ways to move, the ways to handle yourself, the ways to do all that. Like I said, when you first asked me the question growing up, bro, I'm not about to sit up here and say, bro, I'm a crip, I'm a blood, I'm a vice. Like, that, bro, I ain't none of that, bro. Mm -hmm. But there's not a person that's going to disrespect me. Right. Because you know you're a man. A man, bro. <laughs> and now, now, on that note, let me ask you something. When was that moment that your alarm clock come on and you said, I know I'm the shit, I'm the shit. Mm. When, when, was, when was that moment, you know, you know, because you, you were in the field, was it on the field, was it in the locker room, was it that you was laying in the, when was that moment when you said, how old was you? I'm that nigga, I'm the shit. Ain't nobody fucking with me. Because you know this shit is about mindset. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mentality. That, before you even get on the fucking field. Mentality. When did that hit? Man, it, it hit me in Juco, and I would always tell my partners, I would say, bro, I'm a millionaire way before I got a million dollars in my account. Mentally, I'm a millionaire. The way I move, right? Jay-Z said best. I'm not a businessman. I'm a businessman. I'm a business, man. All right. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So once I started realizing, it was, I was in junior college when I think Matthew Stafford signed like a $70 million deal. Uh, right out the gate. Right out the gate. You said. I said, if I take this shit serious, I can make that? Oh, man. Pookie, Day Day, Shaquanda, Sarah, Mary Beth, baby, I, I, the homeboy, I can't. I, I can't. I got to lock in. I'm like, I got to focus. Because what, what's on my line is different than what's on your line. Yeah. We all fishing. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. I got a great white on mine though, mm-hmm. but it's gonna take me all every reel. A lot of, yep. Every reel in is timely. It's structure. And you talk to a person. I hate fishing. I stopped sucking my thumb from fishing. Right. That's a side story. But when you're reeling that great white in, as you're getting closer and closer to your dreams, you have to focus and lock in and just kind of have that matrix moment where everything kind of slows down and realize, like, bro, I can't go out today. I got to focus. Man, I got to do that. I got to focus. And then that gives you confidence in me knowing when I was in JUCO, like, bro, if I'm working out at 2 a.m., motherfuckers ain't doing this shit. Fuck, no, they sleep. So now when I when we and it's time for us to perform, I'm that nigga. You ain't willing to do what I'm willing to do, and you ain't going through what I done went through. So, therefore, bro, I got way more to lose than you. Right. See what I'm saying? And it's a mentality. That don't mean I'm better than somebody. Right. It's just my mental is stronger than you because, like I told my son, I needed football. You don't need basketball to succeed. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, it takes one generation mm-hmm. to have that mentality to propel the whole everybody, the whole bloodline. Mm-hmm. And that was me, mm-hmm. right? My father was a landscaper. He was a contractor, mm-hmm. right? And to him, he taught me certain core values that I still reign and keep in my heart still to this day. And I empower my, 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 my boys. I got five boys, two girls, and... I still teach them the same thing. And even for my daughters, it has to be from a softer kind of tone. I spoil them or I teach them things that they will never be able to look for another man's voice to get. I'm like, Shakira, you want this? If whatever your heart's desire, baby, I will always be there for you. But it's going to come with a price. Mm -hmm. It's going to come with a price. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to teach you because when when somebody ramshacked this house and y'all in it, I'm going to be the one that's going to step in front of you and take that bullet. Mm -hmm. If you have terminal cancer and you need a lung and you need something, a a, a blood transfusion or whatever, I'm going to be that person. So that little knucklehead dude that you're going to be dating, he ain't willing to lose what I'm willing to give up for you. Right. So Kuda, Sovereign Dior, baby, listen, trust me. I love you with all my heart. And when I tell you I love you, I'm willing to die by you. Mm. Right, Absolutely. and I had an interesting conversation with Steve Harvey, um, and and he really put it into motion. Like, bro, man, a lot of these cats out here, man, they just want to fuck, right? And that's all well and cool. We all went through that phase. Like, damn, bro, I got a bad one on my. But man, listen, the ones that I always had problems with, the bad bitches, though, even the women, right? The ones that gave me the run for my money was the ones that was hip to the thinking. Like, bro, listen. That whole shit that you kind of bring into the forefront, man, I've been living that. Mm -hmm. I've been exposed to going out the country, going here, going to Miami. Oh, y'all going there for spring break? Yeah, that's cute, man. Me and my dad, we take family trips there. Right. Now and what? Right. Mm. See what I'm saying? It's a different type of flex, bro. Absolutely. And that's how you structure your daughters, too. Absolutely. Because now when they come, they can't leave with their pockets. Mm -mm. This ain't no your Mm -mm. border thing. What the fuck you talking about, man? You know my house. The house I grew up in is 17,000 like, square like, feet. Come on, man. Fuck you talking about? I live in the Lenox Mall. Come on. So, like, what are we come talking on. about? You so, know what I mean? So, so you so you joking on me with the, with these Walmarts on, but, bro, in my bank account, bro, I could buy a Walmart. Right. <laughs> yeah. My dad can buy that. Right. So you looking at the material stuff, like, it's irrelevant. Like, for last year, man, one of my New Year's resolutions was I didn't want to buy no high fashion. Because at the point of, like, everybody knows me because of fashion. They're like, oh, my God, I can just that and the third. And, I, and it hit me one time when I went to an event. And it, it will still remain nameless, the event that I was at. But I'm like, bro, these folks don't give a fuck about me. And I done spent millions of dollars buying y'all product. Mm-hmm. I mean, going out my way, I done crunched my feet into y'all's shoes. Uncomfortable just to, just to have somebody look at me and say, oh, bro, he got it. Mm-hmm. If you got what you say? If what's already understood, she need had to be said. Absolutely, and what that's I why. Got? And that's why we, when you see us, you see we saying, got bro? our own merch on. We got, hey, I got some Adidas sweatpants on. I got some come Yeezys, on. and niggas know we got money. Yeah, we don't. But one thing about us, we don't lead with the money mm-hmm. because when you when you see us, we don't want you to see things. We want you to see us. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? When a young nigga see us 
and they holl out, look at them nut ass niggas. Nuts. And they run up and we get the bin. They see us. They not worrying about if Gilly got his rolly on, his chains on. They not worrying about none of that shit because they in tune with us. And that's what really matter. You feel what I'm saying? So for us, we base our show around the youngins, around the youth, and around if you not a youngin or you not somebody that's that's elevating, then you gotta be a legend. You got to be an older guy, but you got to be a legend that could give out game. Like Cam just sat here and gave out game. Gave y'all a, this shit was $5 million worth of game that he gave out. But before we get off of here, I, I want y'all to understand, because he said, I found out I was this shit at, at, at a junior college. He said junior college. A junior college. You know what type of confidence that take? You know what type of, because a lot of motherfuckers, when they don't go straight from high school to the big university, a lot of their confidence leave. Leave. Uh, they stop believing that they that nigga. Man, what? They, ah, and I damn. went, and, 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 and my, my roller coaster was, I was a five-star athlete, right? I go to a dominant university, University of Florida, mm -hmm. right? And at that time, Florida was Title Town USA. Yes, it was. You feel me? And I transferred, and they had a transfer portal, uh, portal now where it's like, okay, I can transfer out here, and then with no penalty, I can play right away. Mm -hmm. We had to go junior college mm. and graduate from junior college mm -hmm. to go to the next school. And I'm sitting up here, and I'm like, bro, I seen what the top is like. So now the grind is even harder for me because seeing it, I rather I told myself, man, this at, at an early age. I said I would rather be broke as fuck and not ever touch money, rather than to have money and end up being broke as fuck. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's so many cats out there like that, mm -hmm. right? So when I went to Dream College, I seen what it was like to to get the Nikes and they get this and they get the backing and they get the the this, the that, and the third. And I'm like, damn. I could either be depressed on that or use that to drive me to get back to that same forefront. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. It went crazy. That's what I did, bro. And and and, and I hate to fuck it, I ain't hating to, to use my to use my life, my life um uh testimonies, but I tell kids all the time, it's like, bro, man, use the game of football. Mm -hmm. Use it. Don't let that shit use, use you, you, bro. Mm -hmm. Like and, and no disrespect to anybody that's in semi pro and no disrespect to anybody that's overseas doing that stuff, but that's cool. If you make money, man, make your money. But you have to be an adult and understand, like, bro, if I have to get a regular job, let me get a regular job. Working at McDonald's isn't dumb if you making money. Making money ain't stupid. Right. What's stupid is you broke as fuck and now you gotta I don't work. I ain't working for nobody. You gotta rob somebody. I ain't working for nobody. Because you because your ego kicked in. Yeah, come on, man. Because I'm one, too good for that. One thing God to do, he'll ease your motherfucking ego down in prison. Mm. He beat your ego the fuck yes, up in prison. Mm. When the white man tell you, get the fuck up. Who the fuck is you looking at like that? Can't do nothing. Then you stand there. Can't do nothing. Ego fucked up, bruised and nothing. abused now. No matter how many sets you claim, and don't matter all that, bro. <laughs> right. Listen, when somebody else owns your or has your destiny in their hands, bro, like you at the mercy of them. Right. They could do anything too. Absolutely. I'm going to ask you this, Cam. Now, when we talk about sports, uh, who the top players you ever went up against and you said to yourself, it's going to be a long day? Mm. You, on the other side of that field, you said, man, it's going to be a long day. I went, I, I went against him every single day at practice. Luke Keekley. Mm, hell yeah. He, Luke Thomas Keekley Davis. was a fucking Ooh, shit. It's a tackle was a fucking you know tackling machine. But he, was, he was so <laughs> cerebral. What? In, in, in <coughs> the way he prepared, the way he carried himself. Like, man, you look at Luke outside of football, man, he was just this geeky dude. And he was just like so fun loving. But as soon as he doggone crossed that doggone field, it just he just turned into something. Whew. And you know my competitive drive with TD and and we always talk about it, me and Thomas. And it was like, bro, we challenge each other. It was fuck you, fuck everything about you on this field. And after shit, 
Nigga, let's go get something to eat. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like that. We bought the best out of each other. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I had that every single day to go up against that practice. So by the time game time came, my mentality was different. So they want to look at me like a battering ram on fourth and one. My mentality was, listen, bro, it's you or me. I got to get it done. And where I'm from, it don't matter if – I'm in the grocery store. I'm at a gas station. If another man walks in front of me and, and hindering my where I want to go, he got to be dealt with. Mm. And you're going to be dealt with it. You know what I'm saying? Simple and plain. That don't make you no thug. That don't make you no. Th- it's just about mentality, bro. Mm-hmm. And a lot of dudes mentality is off. It's, it's, it's flickering. It ain't burning. It's just flickering. Mm-hmm. And once that flicker turns into a burn and the desire to want to win and succeed, Bro, that's when you're going to succeed. Mm-hmm. It ain't no excuses. The thing that makes everybody the same, when you look at the Donald Trumps of the world, the Joe Bidens of the world, the, the Kanye Wests of the world, the Jay-Zs of the world, the Drakes of the world, the LeBrons of the world, the, uh, you know. You uh, name it. Name them. The only thing we got in common is 24 hours in a day. What you going to do with yours? You can use the crackhead. You can use the dope dealer. You can use the teacher. You can use the counselor. You can use a lawyer. Man, everybody got 24 hours in a day, bro. What you going to do with yours? Is you going to be having this mentality where it's like, bro, I'm chilling today. Mm-mm. Ain't no chill. Ain't no chill. My chill no button chill. fucking broke. <laughs> broke. My shit been broke. You know what I mean? So that's where we at with it. Bro. All I know is work. That's why. That's what it's that's about. Why, that's why when Cam called, we jump right on the butt. Be right there. You did it. You see how quick it happened? Yeah. He, he came back but, from vacation. Like, absolutely. Be yeah. But listen, man, I just want to salute you, Cam, yeah, man. You're a legend, man. You're a motherfucking legend, man. I, 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 I've been following you all week since you got to Auburn. And, you know, so I, I, I know your story. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I even seen a, a documentary on you and shit. Right. So, uh, you know, uh, I commend you, man. Keep doing your thing, man. Keep being special out here. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Keep being a hell of a father, a hell of a leader, a hell of a provider, man. Yes. And I commend you on this motherfucking restaurant. I love this man, spot. This shit so is I tell you, sexy. I tell y'all this, man. <laughs> well, first off, if you ain't never been to Fellowship, the next, it's the destination spot, man, yes. in Atlanta. You know, but I commend you guys for opening the eyes of the real and it's needed because a lot of people will stroke egos and be like, bro, don't let that motherfucker try you. Man, go kill that motherfucker. No, fuck no. It's don't do that. It's going to cost you. Don't it's do gonna that. Cost. It's going to cost you. What it's going to cost you is going to be up to somebody to decide, but you don't want that. Mm-hmm. And the content that you guys produce, man, is heavy, it's needed, and it's impacting in a positive way, man. So, man, appreciate you guys, man. We all have, you know, we all in the car driving in a destination. And we don't have to be down the same street to hit that same destination. Right. See what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. And whether I'm doing it with my platform, you guys are definitely doing it with you guys' platform, man, and I just commend you. I tip my hat to you. Thank and, you, And uh, that's what I do. So one finger, one pinky, one thumb. I'm out of here, man. One love. Hey, man, shout out to his hat. You, you got the hat company too, right? Mashika. Mashika. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I might have him send me one or something you know, going live. <laughs> <laughs> you know Take Tootie out, yeah. You know I mean, yeah. fucking wrong with you, yeah. Sheikah, baby. Pull the cat, yeah. pull the old school out. <laughs> yeah, yeah pull my old one of my De- old school. Decorate out. your, decorate your pinky. I ain't decorating that day. my pinky, man. That's you know too mean? much, yeah, man. So That's give the whole feel, you're baking it back to the seventies. Yeah, yeah. 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 but it's just like that, right?